say here on the show, we don't we? We highlight the fact that there are certain things you should do and shouldn't do, particularly if you're a huge corporate company. Seemingly because, of course, it alienates the core audience of what you're spending your money on. And, you know, when you think about it, there are none bigger than the BBC. The BBC is funded predominantly by, of course, taxpayers' money, the BBC licence fee. Now, recently, of course, in the last few years, many people have decided not to renew their licence fee, which has resulted in court cases, people being harassed in their homes, and, of course, people sending out mystery people to visit them at home to claim or see if they're still actually watching the BBC Broadcasting Corporation. Even the boss, Tim Davy, recently pointed out that it's not really a tangible thing moving forward because obviously people have different choices. And according to him, the BBC could simply go online by the end of the decade with dwindling audiences. It's not always about dwindling audiences, though. It's about the colossal salaries that they pay to particular individuals, the likes of Claudia Winkleman, Zoe Ball, Gary Lineker, for seemingly doing very little. But it's this particular new production that's caused an absolute riot over here, and for all the right reasons, and I'm sure you will agree once I explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here, nice to see you. Yes, this particular story really has created a rumpus for all the wrong reasons, particularly for the BBC. As I say, it's your money that they use to make these particular productions. You know, for a podcast, for instance, it can take anywhere from five to ten thousand pounds. I don't know why, you know, because the average person can make it a lot cheaper. But in the BBC world, allegedly, it seemingly takes a lot more money. Producer, you know, creator, director, researcher. And then, of course, there's the usual guff and nonsense of cabs, hotels. You get the picture. It can soon stack up. But what's interesting here is they've decided to put together a podcast looking at the story, the life, whatever you want to call it, of, of course, the ISIS queen, as she's been dubbed, Shamea Begin. That's right. This is a girl who departed the United Kingdom, left without telling anyone, including her parents, to join ISIS. She's been documented many times throughout her stay there. And at some points has said on camera that she's not sorry for any of the things that she's done. Now, of course, she's decided to change her tune, having had a taste of life over there, particularly the restraints that she's now come to dislike. It's interesting, isn't it? But moving forward, the BBC have now been accused of helping her story because right now she's fighting to return back to the United Kingdom and back for her citizenship. Even the Home Secretary has said, no, she shouldn't return. The vast majority of the British public have said no. So why have the BBC decided to seemingly put out something of a, an akin to a propaganda broadcast to look at her story? Clearly the public mood is, no thank you. But as ever with the BBC, they don't necessarily do what you or I want. As we told you recently, they decided that they couldn't afford to remake, broadcast, put a production together of the seasonal favourite Top of the Pops. Too expensive. But seemingly, propaganda material which the great British public seemingly do not want also. Well, there's money for that, and it looks like the Shamima Begin story will be put out on BBC Sounds. Now, truly, is that really worth your licence fee? And as ever, I always like to say here on the show, would you tune in, listen or download? Is this really the sort of content that the BBC was set up for? And in this 21st century world where money really speaks, and as ever, it's the public that can decide whether they wish to support you or not. Who's making these absolute daft decisions? As ever, when I know more, you'll know more. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.